Imagine going 36 hours without a bite. Seems easy, right? Just skip dinner, sleep, skip breakfast, and keep going. But inside, your organs are low-key panicking. They're sending group texts like, uh, is anyone bringing snacks? What happens next isn't a meltdown, it's a reboot. So what actually happens when you don't eat for 36 hours? Let's find out from the inside. Think of this as a body experiment where every organ has a job to do. The liver's the fuel manager, cool under pressure. The brain runs the control room, bossy but brilliant. The stomach, total drama queen. The pancreas delivers insulin, like a polite mailman who's about to go on vacation. Fat cells, they're sitting on a mountain of energy, pretending to be innocent. And the heart, steady as always, just keeping the beat. They don't talk out loud, but trust me, they've got opinions. Because once the food stops, this whole team has to figure out who's in charge. So here's how the chaos starts. The clock's ticking, but your body's still living off that last meal. Right now, everything feels normal, because it is. You've got fresh fuel in the tank and your organs are happily coasting. Glucose from your food is flowing through your blood like rush hour traffic. Busy, fast, slightly chaotic, but organized. Insulin shows up waving that sugar into your muscles and liver for storage. Your liver's topping up its glycogen tanks, basically your body's short-term battery pack. The pancreas is running on autopilot, sending out insulin packages like it's prime day. And your fat cells, they're lounging on the couch, scrolling social media, pretending to be out of office. Everything's fed, fueled, and functioning. Even your brain's happy. It's getting a constant drip of sugar, its favorite snack. This is the fed state, your body's version of cruise control. But the countdown's already started. Because once that food pipeline shuts off, insulin slowly backs away. Blood sugar drifts down, and deep inside, your organs look around and realize, wait, who's paying the energy bill now? The calm ends. The liver sighs, rolls up its sleeves, and says, guess it's my turn. And that's where the real fasting story begins. A few hours in, and things start to shift. Your last meal's long gone, blood sugar's dropping, and insulin, the bartender of your bloodstream, is wiping down the counter and calling it a night. With the main fuel service closed, your organs start to look around like, uh, who's handling energy now? That's when the liver steps up, the responsible one that always ends up doing overtime. It unlocks its secret stash of glycogen, basically your emergency sugar savings account, and starts dripping it into your blood. That stash keeps your brain powered, your muscles moving, and your mood mostly in check. But glycogen doesn't last forever. It's enough for maybe half a day. Less if you're busy, more if you're chilling. As the tank empties, your liver's like a phone on 10% battery, dimming the screen to save juice. Your stomach didn't get the memo, still making digestive juices, wondering why no one showed up for dinner. And that's when your stomach starts growling for real. You're not in danger, your body's just bored and confused. It's used to a full buffet and suddenly the kitchen's closed. Hormones like ghrelin spike, poking your brain like, hey, maybe eat something? But while your stomach's protesting, your liver's quietly prepping for a major system update. The easy fuel's almost gone, and the backup generators are warming up. Around the 10 hour mark, your liver's tired, glucose is low, and your body's looking around like, so who's bringing snacks now? This is when the big switch begins. Insulin's out, so your fat cells finally stop pretending to be decorative and step up. They open their vaults, releasing stored fat, triglycerides, into the bloodstream. Those fatty molecules float to your liver, which turns them into tiny fuel packets called ketones. Ketones are your body's backup energy plan, the cleaner, slower burning kind. It's like switching from gasoline to solar power. Not as flashy, but a lot more efficient. Your brain, usually a sugar addict, takes a sip and goes, wait, this actually works. It starts running partly on ketones. Smoother energy, fewer mood crashes. You might feel weirdly clear or surprisingly focused. The stomach's still auditioning for a soap opera, growling for attention, but the rest of your organs have moved on. Heart rate settles, blood sugar stabilizes. You've crossed from fed mode to fat burn mode. It doesn't feel like fireworks, more like a quiet gear shift. But under the surface, your whole system just changed engines. 
16 hours in and your body's officially switched operating systems. The fat vaults are open, ketones are flowing through your bloodstream like little fuel trucks. Your brain, once addicted to sugar, takes a sip and goes, wait, this actually works. Ketones give it steady power, no spikes, no crashes, no I need a snack or I'll bite someone moments. It's a calmer, more focused kind of energy. Inflammation starts cooling down. Your organs finally get to breathe. The liver's busy refining fuel like a top tier factory. The heart's happy. It loves ketones because they're easier to use. Even your cells start cleaning up faster, like someone upgraded the system overnight. The stomach's still yelling for attention, remember me, but everyone else is in the zone. Energy smoother, focus steadier, mood calmer. This is the point your body stops missing food and starts performing without it. At 24 hours, your organs stop complaining and start collaborating. Your body's like, all right, if we're doing this, let's make it worth it. Autophagy kicks in, your cell's version of spring cleaning. They start recycling junk, broken proteins, damaged parts, anything clogging the system. It's not punishment, it's maintenance. Your immune system even joins in, tossing out lazy white blood cells to build new ones later. The liver's cleaning, the gut's repairing, the cells are welding, polishing, restoring. You might feel lighter, not just from calories, but because your whole system's decluttering. Your body's not starving, it's rebuilding. 30 hours in and your body's in full upgrade mode. Growth hormone shows up with a clipboard yelling, all right people, let's grow something. It helps preserve muscle, repair tissue, and keep fat cells donating energy. You're not breaking down anymore. You're rebuilding smarter. Meanwhile, insulin, remember our bartender, is still off duty. Your cells finally reset their sensitivity, like restarting a vending machine that finally drops the snack. So when you eat again, your body handles sugar with precision. Less spike, less crash, more balance. Your heart's smoother, your liver's humming, your gut's calm, your brain's sharp. Every organ's working in sync, like a jazz band that just nailed the groove. You've gone from chaos to rhythm, from feeding mode to healing mode. This isn't starvation, it's your biology at its best. So here you are, 36 hours later, and your body's quietly doing something incredible. It's not starving, it's adapting. Every organ, every cell, every spark of energy working in perfect sync. This is what fasting was designed for, not suffering, but balance. The brain steady, the heart smooth, the metabolism finally gets a breather. You didn't shut down, you leveled up. You didn't just survive 36 hours, you unlocked the version of you that runs better, cleaner, and calmer. And once you've seen it work this way, you start wondering what else your body can do when you stop interrupting it. So if this helped you finally understand what's happening inside you, hit like. It tells the algorithm you enjoy watching smart stuff about your body. And if you want to learn how to lose weight faster by fixing the one insulin habit almost everyone gets wrong, you'll see it right here. Or if you'd rather keep exploring your own way, there's another video waiting, handpicked just for you.